Zero crossing detection is now supported in Simulink with fixed step solvers. Starting in release 2022A, you can enable this feature for simulations in normal, accelerator, and rapid accelerator simulation modes. And in release 2022B, you can generate real-time capable code for ERT-based system targets. To see where this feature can be beneficial, consider the following example model of a self-resetting integrator. The integrator block in this model integrates a constant derivative of 1 and resets its value to 1 third when its value reaches 1. This reset is determined using the reset port of the integrator block. The integrator block has enabled zero crossing detection to determine precisely when the reset of its state value should occur. Simulating this model with a variable step solver, here we can see the expected sawtooth curve that gets generated. Let's consider these simulation results as our ground truth or baseline as we compare fixed step simulation results. Open up the solver configuration parameters and set the solver type to fixed step. We'll first use a fixed step size of 0.1. With these settings, you can see the simulation results don't match the baseline. This is because there's no zero crossing detection to locate discontinuities in the simulation. And it means that if you want to get accurate simulation results for this model, you'll need to reduce the fixed step size. Now let's reduce the step size to 0.01 and simulate again. Here we can see that this reduction in step size improves simulation accuracy significantly. However, reducing the step size like this can slow down simulation and preclude real-time code generation. Now let's see how zero crossing detection can speed up the simulation of this model with a fixed step solver. We'll set the step size back to 0.1 and select the checkbox to enable zero crossing detection for fixed step simulation. Doing so enables a set of zero crossing options. The maximum number of bracketing iterations parameter bounds the number of search iterations used to locate a single zero crossing and the maximum number of zero crossings per step parameter bounds the maximum number of zero crossings that Simulink will search for within a single fixed step. Simulating the model with zero crossing detection enabled, we obtain simulation results shown in yellow. Note the significant improvement in accuracy over our previous fixed step results at the same step size. This demonstrates how zero crossing detection can improve simulation speed for fixed step solvers using a larger fixed step size without having to sacrifice simulation accuracy. Now that we have seen how zero crossing detection can lead to faster fixed step simulations, let's take a look at what types of models may benefit from this feature. This model uses pulse width modulation or PWM to control the DC motor. The PWM signal in this model is generated inside the control subsystem. The signal is created by the intersection of a Dewey cycle signal shown in blue here with a reference carrier wave shown in yellow. The intersection of these signals creates the pulse signal shown in the bottom scope. Accurate simulation of the plant model, the DC motor in this case, relies on precisely locating these intersections to generate the pulse signal. Now let's go back to the PWM generator block. Without zero crossing detection, this block needs to run with a discrete sample time of 10 microseconds. The introduction of this very fast discrete rate limits the solver step size, slows down simulation, and prevents the generation of real-time capable code for this model. Fortunately, this type of modeling construct is a good candidate to take advantage of zero crossing detection. Let's update the model to take advantage of this feature. We will start by disabling the Simscape local solver. Next, we will open up the solver configuration parameters and select a global simulink solver that supports zero crossing detection. ODE1BE is an implicit solver that is a good choice for this model. Next, we will select the checkbox to enable zero crossing detection. With zero crossing detection enabled, we can increase the step size significantly for this model, up to 500 microseconds, or twice the carrier wave frequency of one millisecond. Finally, let's go back to the PWM generator block and change the sample time parameter to zero so that it uses continuous time PWM generation. This means that the PWM signal will be generated using the zero crossing detection of the relational operator blocks inside the block mask. Zero crossings will occur when the continuous carrier wave and the duty cycle intersect. After making these changes and recompiling the model, we can see that the PWM generation gets continuous sample time and the base rate of the model increases to 500 microseconds. Now that we have successfully set up the model for zero crossing detection, Let's see how the simulation compares to simulation with the original model configuration. We will simulate the model under the original configuration shown in the top plot 
and the new configuration we just set up with zero crossing detection enabled, shown in the bottom plot. Here we can see that this model simulates about four times faster with zero crossing detection enabled while still producing accurate simulation results. This shows how zero crossing detection can speed up simulation with fixed step solvers, particularly for models with frequent switching or other discontinuities that impact the continuous dynamics. Thanks for listening, and we hope that you can take advantage of zero crossing detection to speed up your fixed step simulations and generate real-time capable code.